Good morning everyone. You can see my breath but it's not actually that cold outside today. It is absolutely wonderful and I hope that you can hear me over the sound of all of the birds because it is a very, very noisy morning in the countryside. <gasps> I can't believe it's going to be 21 degrees today and I'm feeling very, very chipper in my step because of it. Um, last night I stayed up really late, um, not really late actually, it was probably about till about 10.30 and I stayed up researching the style of um, flowers that I want to go into our beds because I really want to have something visual that I can see as well and I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner but I stumbled across the gardens at time and if you guys don't know one of the first sort of vlog videos I ever did was our first trip to the Cotswolds and um, time is just the most wonderful place and I love everything about it. It's probably my favorite place to go in the Cotswolds. And um, I saw their gardens. And do you know what I really liked about them? Is that they're, they're wild and cottage, like they have that country cottage-esque, but they also have the grandeur of some more, like, um, some more shaped topiaries, like buxus balls and things like that. So I really liked the sort of the, the lack of structure when it comes to the lavender, but then the structure when it comes to the Buxus balls. So I've got some pictures, I'll pop them on screen, but I think that's what I'm gonna kind of aim for with the front of the house and also um, the, the beds around here. Now with around the um, outside of my greenhouse, I'm actually just gonna let the grass grow in first and see how it looks and then see if I feel like I need to do a full border. My, my neighbor had a really wonderful idea of like just doing the corners or creating little beds. So um, I'm gonna let this area grow and see how it comes together. But for the front of the house and the, the beds at the back, I'm gonna go for a white, green and lavender theme. The thing with lavender is, that I've learned, is that you do have to replace it every few years um, because it just goes a bit woody and twiggy. So I don't want to use too much lavender. So when I was talking about doing lavender borders, that's going to cost a lot of money to um, replant it every few years. So using lavender to break up areas of it are, it's a much better idea to do basically. So I think that's what my plan of action is going to be. I've got to take Porter to the vet this morning just to get his um, uh, worming stuff done and um, get him weighed and things like that. Um, I put his new car seat in because he needed one that he could see out of the window so that's in the car ready to go and um, then I think I'm going to do a little bit of a grand tour of some greenhouses so that I can then get back and get into um, some greenhouses some garden centers I've got blooming greenhouses on the mind um, but yeah so I can get back and get back into the garden so hopefully I'm going to check that I can take him to the garden centers I think I can I think I can take him to Dobby's um, and I'm gonna go to Bell Plantation as well. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pick up some stuff. Apparently, there's something better than Buxus balls. Like, we've not had any problems with our Buxus balls, but apparently you can have some real um, issues with Buxus balls, but I've never had it. So I don't know whether to go for this other stuff. It was Claire Topman who told me about it. I'm gonna go inside and research it. And I'll see if they've got those. Otherwise, I'll just get some Buxus balls. Exciting to have a plan, it really is. And, and to just sort of have an idea of how I want it to look. There's gonna be little sort of like pockets of white and lilac and purple, but then also um, really beautiful Buxus balls in different sizes to kind of throw off the shapes. So yeah, looking forward to it. But good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome back to the vlog because um, Today's gonna to be a good day. It is gonna be a very, very, very good day. This little section of the garden makes me laugh so much. We, paint, we painted, we planted these box hedges uh, last year, imagining that they would grow quite quickly. Apparently box hedge doesn't grow that quickly. Um, instead, what we have grown is some wild mint and it's beautiful, but not what we wanted. <laughs> So I think what I hope to do today is I'm going to be relocating these buxus balls and these hydrangeas because this area of the garden gets full sun and it kind of um, destroys the uh, hydrangeas. So I'm going to take them and move them to these beds. I'm going to buy some more buxus balls and some more foliage and start planning out where everything's going to go. Um, we've already got lots of little spruits everywhere but these big 
bigger plants are actually going to start coming out because I'm going to go for more ashy toned leaves. Um, there's going to be little bits of lavender sort of um, fed in there but I think Ali's going to come with me to uh, the garden centre so um, I've got a helping hand but now I'm heading into the greenhouse to unpack my burner because hopefully we can get that installed today as well. The grout is dry and it's looking wonderful in here. All of the babies are doing well. Lovely job. So in here is the wood, like decorative wood pieces for the bioethanol burner. I'm waiting to find out, but lots of people have said that these are these give so much heat and some people say that they don't. So I'm really excited to see how much this heat this thing gives off. I'm gonna get it burning today, hopefully. Um, Ali will probably read the instructions and tell me that I can't though. <laughs> And apparently, I know you can't see me, but apparently they're also a lot easier to clean. Oh, put that down there. So I'm just about putting it in now. The reason why I went for this one is because it has this plinth that you can stack real wood underneath, which obviously gives it a more rustic feel, but also elevates the, the flame up. So that when you're sat at this end of the table, you can still see the fire and it's not lost um, underneath. It's also really nice and low profile. I really like the fact that it's like, it's quite um, narrow. I went for the, the large flue and this actually extends, but I think we might have to sort of glue it some way um, as I'm not entirely sure, but it does reach there, which I, again, I was worried that this dwarf wall was gonna be too deep, but it does reach the window, which looks obviously like a real flue. Um, this is the handle for the door, and then this is where you put the um, fuel. So I'm gonna get this all set up now. Well, it's all set up, ready to stack wood underneath. Um, I'm waiting for Ali just to secure everything in place with all of the screws and to fix the flue. But it is looking absolutely perfect. I think it's the right size. I was actually a bit worried that it was too big, but I think it's, it's really nicely balanced on that wall and the height of it's really nice and I love that it's low profile. It just looks so wonderful in here. Oh my goodness, now I just need to find some chairs so that I can sit in here. I think what I wanna do is put like more of a like cozy chair in the corner maybe so that I can sit here and kind of look out over everything, um, but also have some dining chairs. So maybe I'll have like four dining chairs and then one cozy chair on this side or maybe even there, who knows? Oh, come on, party. Time to go. In your seat. There we go. Mummy, get you strapped in. Look a good boy. I'll get you a blanket too because it's a bit cold, isn't it? Good boy. Good boy. Get in his car seat. Here you go, my boy. Little blanket. For you to snuggle down. There you go. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I'm getting in the front. Don't worry. Good boy. Should you get this open for you? Get a little bit of light in here for you. My little angel. My other little angel. I've got two angels. Is that all right for you there? Yeah, a little high chair. 
good boy. Off we go, Porty Poo. Off we go. You strapped in. Good boy. We've just got to the vets and Porter's just gone in. Gone in. Um, they, um, he did really well in his little car seat actually, which is really good. A little bit sort of, there's, he always licks his lips when he feels a little bit car sick. Um, so I was kind of paying attention to that. He was licking when we stopped quite a lot. Um, but hopefully it will just mean that he needs to get used to it because he had to get used to it before. So we'll see how it goes, but he's just gone in and he always gets like, just so much attention from the people at the vets. Lumi not so much, she's not really their favourite because Lumi's just like, she's so sensitive whereas Porter's one of those animals that's just like a people pleaser. He's like Ali, <laughs> I'm like Lumi <laughs> and uh, Porter's like Ali. But um, yeah, they're gonna give him a little bit of a check over and do his worming and things like that, so it's good. Whilst I took Porter to the vets, Ali's been working hard over in the greenhouse to get the wood burner working. Teamwork makes the dream work. I know I'm often filming Ali doing all the hard work, but I do help, just not as hard. <laughs> Ali is very precious about my floor. I don't think there needs to be more grout in there today. Just keep... no, I'm assuming you stick lighter in there. Go on then. You want it on that? Yeah. Okay. I'll try it out for the first time. Well, the first fire is lit in the burner and I am so in love with it. Oh my goodness, this makes me so happy. I'm gonna shut the door and see how warm it gets in here now um, with this on. Ali's been stacking the wood underneath. Oh wow, I can't believe it. It looks so good in here. Well, I am extremely toasty in here. I can't wait to light it on a slightly um, colder day because obviously it's just warm in here in general at the moment, but um, it's very, very lovely. Uh, I've just actually had the best conversation ever with my neighbor. She was like, oh, I just I had a meeting in my garden yesterday because obviously we're allowed to have people over. So um, we had some people here from the flower arranging club and I was like, oh, flower arranging. There's a club, and she's like, yeah, yeah, there's a club. And so I've now been invited to the flower arranging club. This is amazing. So weird, I was just thinking about having some classes for flower arranging um, with a florist that I get flowers for carry for. And um, it's just perfect, isn't it? And also, I'm sorry, I just can't get, I can't. I'm just, I'm just standing around in here doing nothing because it's so lovely and beautiful in here that I'm just, I don't know what to do with myself. We are now in the car on the way to uh, the garden centre. We're going to pick up some bits. I'm going to give it a go with picking up some uh, plants for the flower beds just to start uh, the design. And it's probably something that I'll begin like begin with a sort of foundation and then I'll add to over the summer as well. Um, but I think now that I've got the visual, um, and it was actually Ali that found it, he found the, the pictures. Um, I think I know what I'm working towards now with all of the beds so that there's a little bit more continuity. So we're going to head to the garden centre now, which is basically all I do in uh, my vlogs now, but I just, just enjoy. Soon we'll be able to do a little bit more. Yes, very, very soon. This weekend we can have friends in our garden. Oh, yeah, this weekend. Well, we can have them tonight. Can no, have it started yeah. yesterday. started yesterday, yeah. I'm getting sun cream in my eyes. I forgot that feeling. Oh, oh yeah, you used to get that all the time on holiday. The you need to get a, a, a more sensitive sun cream for your face. It was a face one. I put one on yeah, face. but I think you need an extra sensitive one. I think one. it goes, I think I, when I rub it, I rub it on my eyelids. So yeah. I think it goes through my eyelids. And be careful because you don't want to get the pinkness on your eyes again that you got last time. No. Um, Watch out. What was I going to say? Are you getting annuals or perennials? Um, perennials. After a quarter yeah. of a mile okay. at the roundabout, um, take the second Would you say exit that? So it's basically what I'm getting. Would you use perennials as your like base, then fluff it up with annuals every year? So basically, today I'm getting my um, my like boulders, as uh, Julie calls at them. So hydrangeas, buxus, um, and maybe a little bit of lavender, which will be my sort of um, stones and pebbles to fill in, and then I'm going to see where we're at. Right. 
after three quarters of a mile at the Lovely. round Oh my gosh, taking off a mask is just the best thing ever, isn't it? Uh, we've just been into the garden centre. I picked up a load of plants just to sort of play around and have a little bit of a zhuzh. Um, I need to find out how much sun our front garden gets, the raised beds at the front of our house, as to whether we could have hydrangeas in them as well. Because I want the hydrangeas to be like the, the pinnacle and then there'd be other bits as well. So I need to research that and just have kind of a bit of a play around with the what I've bought. Lots of whites and um, lilacs and then some, some buxus balls. I wanted to get the Ilex ones because apparently they're better, um, but they just had pom-poms of those, so yes. But I didn't get any pots either, so I'll see what time um, the place close to us closes. I might go later on today if I don't get much done in the garden, but let's head home. My hydrangea's been getting too much sun in my greenhouse, but I just brought it out just to have a look because basically this is kind of um, the vibe that we're gonna be going for. I want a few different sizes of the Buxus ball, and then I want a big piece of lavender and a big hydrangea, and then we're gonna have roses at each corner, and then this wisteria is gonna obviously grow down there, and then I'll fill in any gaps, but what I need to do is dig out the other um, Buxus balls to go in here. Now this is a pink hydrangea and I'm kind of tempted to just leave it to do its thing because it's already sort of blooming so well, uh, not blooming but budding so well. Um, but I don't know how on earth I'm going to get these out on my own. I have no idea. I've also got to get this out. This is like something that's self-seeded. So I need to get that out as well. We also need to get some more soil into this bed, but this whole kind of like white and um, and lilac and green theme, I think is definitely, definitely the one. We're gonna start by tackling this beast and uh, shear it right back because it should have been cut back before. Um, and then we're gonna get this out of the ground and plant it somewhere else, I think. I've just completely cut back this little guy here that we're going to take out and move and this guy's coming out. I'm currently wheelbarrowing loads of um, soil from my veg truck into the bed there just to try and build it up a little bit because it's sunk down quite a lot but um, yeah it's all kind of coming together and the good thing is, is the roses that I've bought are um, full sun roses so I can put them around the front and have a little bit of a rose border there. We have a very tired puppy dog. He's been outside with us all day and honestly, he's so, so good. Ali is outside, he's just been sorting out the... Ooh, have we got... We've got a mucky screen, guys. <laughs> Fuzz about that. Is that better? Probably haven't been cleaned in a few years. Um, he's got the sun loungers out, he's got the current furniture which we're changing obviously for oxenwood and uh, we are about to get some more stuff in this bed but first things that oh my gosh i haven't even seen myself look at those alfalfa sprouts i'm about to pour myself a glass of new zealand sauvignon blanc because this weather is just incredible so i've got myself a bottle of mud house and i'm gonna treat myself i haven't managed to find myself new i've just like what Hopefully I've caught the sun today, but um, I've not found my new wine glasses yet because I really want to get some recycled, like really rustic, bobbly kind of um, wine glasses. I think I've got a delivery of glasses which are some new like water glasses, but sadly we don't have the wine glasses. But oh, it is the season of fruity wine, maybe a little bit of rosé as well. I've actually got a bottle of um, Whispering Angel in there and oh. I'm saving it for a special occasion. If there's one thing I want to treat myself to it is a men's shuffle because I steal Ali's way more than I wear my own. The temperature's dropped a little bit with it being the first actually warm day that we've seen. God, it feels like a long time, doesn't it, since we've had any warm weather. I'm speaking purely from the British perspective. <laughs> Say British. 
Oh my goodness, what an incredible day. However, I don't know if I'll be able to do anything tomorrow because I can already feel the doms in my back. Like from doing the digging of the soil out of my veg truck, I'm like, whew. Um, I have some things to open with you before we finish up for the day. So I thought that we could take a break from the gardening content because I don't know, for me, it's just, it's all about the garden at the moment, but I honestly feel like I don't really know what I'm doing. So I feel a little bit out of my depth. Oh my goodness, I need to get some socks on because the uh, underfloor heating is only just heating up. I was so worried, guys, because this floor is like this thick. It is extremely thick. And then there is about that much adhesive and then there's a screed. And then I don't even know what's between that and the underfloor heating. But I am feeling the warmth through the floor. So I think that means that we haven't lost the heating for our house. Because I, I had this really weird like worry that I was like, did I tell them? that we only have underfloor heating that heats our house. And do they know that the floor has to be compatible with underfloor heating? But they knew. Anyway, um, the amazing Rebecca Masala um, has dropped off a wreath for my house. Basically, she, um, I got her to make some flowers for my friend that was moving house. And I also um, got a wreath for her door and it was one of these wreaths. And Ali saw it and absolutely loved it. And he was like, oh my goodness, I really, really want that wreath in the house. And so Rebecca um, dropped off one of these wreaths for us. I was kind of thinking that this would look really lovely above the cooker. Um, and it's on a really beautiful wicker, uh, like wreath ring. So this is one of those ones that will just last forever. But when you see it in this room and this color, it just looks phenomenal. And Rebecca Masala is like a local florist and she's just amazing. She's really lovely. She's done a few things with like uh, Carolina Herrera um, at our house and she just, yeah, she's amazing. So we've got a little chili here. Thank you for ordering the feather wreath from Rebecca. Happy Easter. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've been a lot more active on the home account recently because my home is starting to feel like my home now. Like it's because I feel comfortable and inspired by my home. And that's what I've been waiting to feel for a really long time. Like it's so interesting from when like we moved in and in our old house, every, I've said this before, but like everything had to be white and gray because there was no daylight. And now actually in this house, there's just so much possibility that even I didn't know. And so, Hopefully when we have some furniture in this hallway, it won't be so echoey. Um, but in this one, I think it's my new glasses. Let me get an opener. And by opener, I mean a cheese knife. Because um, basically I've been like replacing all of my glassware because loads of them broke, loads of them went really yellow and disgusting. And I was just kind of over them as well, so it, it actually worked out quite well. And um, I wanted to get some, similar to the ones I have with the champagne glasses, and get a bit more of like a rustic set. And this is a brand that I found uh, on, I actually didn't find it on Instagram. I just Googled. Hello my darling, are you coming to say hello? Hello beautiful girl, hello. Coming in. Yes, he's got to inspect the package. Make sure there's no trouble in there. Is there any poison stuff in there? No. Okay, good. Good girl. Well done. You can smell the feathers of this wreath, can't you? And you're gonna rub yourself all over it. So I'm gonna remove that from within Lumi's reach. Yes, this was a brand that I found on Google. I basically just Googled um, recycled glassware and this showed up now. I did measure out the size of them because if you remember, I ordered some from Tide and they were just a bit too small. So I'm hoping these are slightly bigger because, oh yes, perfect. I wanted like a high ball glass, perfect. Oh, I love them and they've got actually more of a green tinge to them than I realized that this is the perfect, perfect, 
it's just, do you know what I love about them is that they're all different and they're all really textured and just imperfect because this is the thing that I find is that I'm not meant to have like perfect interiors. I hate it because I just worry about it. Like the, getting rid of our carpet in the living room has been, like Ali and I talked about it the other night and we were like, I can't believe how mentally freeing getting rid of that carpet was because we worried so much about the state of it that, um, and you cannot make a carpet like that look good for more than five minutes. Now we've got a carpet that just looks loved and lived in and I'm just so happy with it. And it's the same with these things, like we bought those really lovely um, glasses from Aino and also the Royal Dalton ones. And the Royal Dalton ones just smashed and then the Aino ones went yellow. And I'm like, oh, just give me some recycled glassware. I'm literally just give me some recycled glassware because I just don't care anymore. Mr. Millen Gordon has cooked us a very, very... Last minute, dinner. Last minute but delicious dinner because we are aiming to be in bed very, very soon. Wowzers. Chicken, bacon and avocado. Oh, is that fresh sourdough bread? It is, isn't it? Mmm. Oh, it's a bloomer. Oh. I beg your pardon. Good morning, everyone. Today is a very, very blustery day. It is definitely not as warm as it has been. Gosh, I said it's supposed to be like at least 12 degrees today. So I'm gonna put my stove to the test. Oh, good morning, happy place. So obviously I've been using this in the sunshine and it's been lovely and warm, but now I really want to see how warm it can get with me putting the stove on. Um, Cause I want to be able to work out here today. So fingers crossed, this gets warm enough. So I'm gonna light the stove now and then get set up to do some emails and um, do some planning. The fire is lit. I'm currently responding to some comments and um, just catching up with some things on my phone as well. Got my diary out here and I've got some emails. So I've just actually, I'm in a cardigan. I'm not gonna lie, it was cold in here, but it is warming up. I don't know if it'll get much warmer than this though. So I'm gonna keep updating you. The fire's just kind of established itself, but um, I went and got a cardigan because I didn't want to be freezing out here. What I can feel is kind of like a draft and what happens when it gets warm in here, I have these automatic vents. So I can only imagine that they will open up and then obviously let in some cool air as well. We spent the day the other day um, trying to plan out the beds and basically I realized as early as humanly possible that I think that I was going down the same route that um, I've gone down previously with like, um, what's the word, with like the home. And when I've kind of tried to do things myself without proper planning and things like that. So what I quickly established was that actually, no, I am going to get someone to help me with the beds. And um, knowing, I think the issue that I have, let me pop you up here. There we go. I think the issue that I have with um, what I want to do versus what I'm able to do. So basically, I am in awe of people like my neighbor, Julie, who, um, you know, just knows everything to, there is to know about plants. Like she knows where they go and her garden is beautiful and everything is just perfect. I don't know that stuff. And it is a lot to know where a plant should sit, like whether it's got enough sunlight, enough shade, how much space it will take up, what time of year it blooms, what type of soil it needs, um, what height it will come to. And I would need to know all of that for all of the plants that I intend to put in nine flower beds, some of which are up to 10 meters long. And I, I quickly established, I was like, you know what, this, this is, a bigger project than I envisioned and I would like to get help with this and I would like to get someone to help me plan the beds and then I can learn maintaining them and then I can add to them and things like that. So that is where we're at at the moment. 
and I actually put up a story on my Instagram and um, basically asked about who would you go to for that? Like if your garden is already here, like our garden has actually essentially been landscaped already. Who do you go to when you want to plan a flower bed? And do you know what? It was something that so many of you were in the same position about. Um, so I thought that I would share the information that I learned with you. So first of all, I learned that um, a herbaceous border is a flower bed. I had no idea that that is what that was. I thought a herbaceous border was like essentially a bed with loads of herbs in it rather than a flower bed. So that was the first thing I learned. There are lots of different people that you can go to for this if you want like advice. You can go to garden centres and often they have like specialists there. I want to be perfectly honest and say that when I've kind of asked questions at garden centres, it all depends on the person that you encounter. Um, there's also horticulturalists that you can speak to. There are then garden designers and then there are also landscape designers. However, and I have looked into this, there are companies online that you can go to and you can essentially buy a border in a box. So I think Waitrose has partnered with Crocus and they do uh, like essentially pre-made borders and they look amazing. Unfortunately, pretty much everything is sold out because if you didn't know, <laughs> it's spring here in England and everybody is doing the exact same thing. So you might see lots of people online now talking about their gardens because we've just been told that we're gonna be spending a lot more time in our gardens because we're allowed to socialize in our gardens. The weather has been, aside from today, really wonderful, which instantly makes everyone want to get outside and do some gardening. And also, I think a lot of people have taken up gardening during lockdown. So it's a passion that a lot of people will be sharing with you online. So that's why things are gonna be sold out first and foremost, but also why you might be seeing people talk about this stuff quite a lot, because it's a thing, it's a real thing. So I looked at these borders in a box and I will link some of the companies down below. There was uh, Crocus at Waitrose, there was also, um, there was a few others that I found as well. So I'll link them down below, but they were really good and they offered really lovely ones. Like they did ones like cottage garden ones, which I thought was a really good option um, for here if I couldn't find an opportunity like elsewhere. And then I, someone actually messaged me and they were like, why don't you just contact Bunny? If you love her design of the Time Gardens so much, why don't you contact her? And I was, you know, like when, it's really weird. Like, you know, when you're essentially like a secret fan of someone, well, I was like, no, I'm not gonna contact her. Like, it's ridiculous. However, I did. <laughs> I, I actually emailed her, but I also emailed some local people that I, I basically um, Googled garden designers where I live and the only person that has given me the time of day is really actually quite bizarre because Bunny's actually designed one of the gardens of um, our neighbors as well. So it's, yeah, I think she knows where I am. But she came back to me and she was like, let's chat on the phone. And I was like, wasn't expecting that because the other two people that I uh, emailed locally were like, I'm too busy, bye. And I was like, we'll go on. And we just had our call this morning basically to discuss things. But I think if I was to sort of work with Bunny on this project, that would be like my like my 10 year plan for the garden. I'm gonna link her YouTube videos down below because she's actually got a YouTube channel by the way. And um, I spent my evening last night watching all of her videos of the gardens at time. And um, they are absolutely beautiful like stunning and so similar to what we're going for here. Like even the furniture at the time that they've used, obviously we're going for oxenwood. It's that same feel. If you look at the sofas that they have outside of the, um, I think it's outside of the cookery school. Is it outside of the cookery school? No, it's not outside of the cookery. It's, I think it's outside one of the like main houses. I can't remember which one, but they've got these big, chunky wood sofas and that's exactly what we're going for and it's got these striped cushions which i think that's what we're going for as well 
there's lots of lavender, but her lavender is like, it's like wild and overgrown. And I've almost been of the mindset that, you know, oh, your lavender looks a bit rubbish after a while. And I don't, I, I did want to ask her, but I didn't, because I didn't want to seem like I was trying to get any like um, tips. But I wanted to ask her if they go around and like re replace the lavender at time, because it looks wild and sprayed and, and unkept, but in a perfectly imperfect sense. Same with their like uh, topiaries and their boxer spools. They're not perfectly round. They're like a little bit overgrown and a, and a little bit like imperfect after the year that we've had when everything is bringing me so much joy about my surroundings and my home. I really want my flower beds to be flourishing. So I'm gonna still get, even if I just use like a wild flower mix to put in that, that was something that Bunny suggested actually, um, that they do these wild flower mixes, which we've got lots of. Um, that are designed, I don't think it's the one that I've got. Um, she had a different name for them, I should have written it down. I knew when I got on the phone to her, I was like, I should have brought a pen and pad. Anyway, she even suggested this particular wildflower mix, just put it in your beds, and they're designed to flower until the first frost. And I thought that's such an inexpensive way to make your borders look beautiful, but also, um, keep you like satisfied that your garden looks lovely and buy you time if you are going to have like a big design anyway so i've got some emails to go back to now as well and that's basically where i'm at i'm exploring my options with making my flower beds lovely because especially even sat here now like i can see one of the biggest flower beds in the garden just there also my farmer gracie order has arrived so i'm gonna unbox that with you i don't know what to expect because i've never ordered anything like this um online like bulbs is not a thing that i order online so i'm gonna unpack that with you and go through it i'm also finishing up work today for the bank holiday weekend and i'm gonna be going and sitting in the garden luckily she's got heaters uh of carrie's house and um, drinking some champagne with my best friend, which I'm looking forward to. And, oh, the pheasants are here, bless them. At the moment, it's actually, it's not been, I mean, there has been huge amounts of process, process, progress in the house. And it's looking wonderful, like honestly, wonderful. I've got another finished room to show you, almost finished, it needs mirror and lights going up. Um, and also our bespoke handles and uh, hinges have gone on. I, I don't know what I like more, the hinges or the handles, because the hinges are, are like, they have got to be the designer handbag of the hinge world. Like they are another level. So I will take you in and give you a final kind of update of the house as well. Things sadly have not progressed in our bedroom. It's not a huge deal, like we said, because we're in the other room and we're kind of fine in there. I wish we had more storage in there, but we've got Christmas trees in the cupboard. But in our bedroom, the tiles were delivered and they were in the wrong size. So apparently the new tiles are being delivered today. I don't know when the tilers are coming to do that. Um, but it still seems like there's been progress going on in there. Anyway, I have spoken to you for 15 minutes. So I'm going to get on with doing some emails and some work. And um, then I am going to basically crack on with my day. I've got a little baby sausage crying because he can see his mommy. Um, okay, first of all, I wanted to show you this. Um, admittedly, the wreath is just there because it just pleases my eyes. But these are the first of our handles on, these are our bespoke finish um iron mongery door furniture from from the anvil this really has made such an amazing finishing like touch to the area i think when you get all of the tones in like the darker fabrics and this floor and the the tones on the walls this made such a difference to these doors and made them feel so much less modern obviously the color itself just does all of the work as well but the feel of these makes me very, very happy. And then, there we go. We have our little pheasant-inspired 
cloakroom toilet which makes me very very happy it looks obviously more red i know i keep saying that but it does look a little bit more red on screen and obviously we are waiting for a mirror and two wall lights to go in as well um, we've got a blind coming for in here and um i just love the feel of it and i love the wallpaper so much i've been sat on this wallpaper for like months now so to finally have it up in here with our high cistern toilet it just looks wonderful so this room will soon be finished i love how this has turned out and i love the color on the the paneling it's made me very happy and again we painted the door the same and with the same door furniture and then to update you in the the bedroom oh my goodness um it smells absolutely horrendous in here by the way just because not that you're going to be able to smell it but um, the, it's obviously all of the, the pipe work's been going in, but these are our new doors that have been uh, put on today by our carpenter. And um, these are obviously much smaller because we had one single door before and now we have two. So it give, gives a lot more space to this particular area. Um, and here, the door used to open this way. And so it would mean that whatever side table I had was really really difficult because um, it had to be able to open the door and my door actually hit all the time so now with this one we've got so much more space and it's looking fabulous we've got our air conditioning in here which is good as well this is what I was talking about these are like the um, designer handbag of hinges like look at that these are from from the anvil as well and oh my gosh they just feel so incredible and just so substantial, much more secure and just much better quality than what we had. Have I ever told you that I feel like I live a double life? Because I feel like I live a double life. Um, I honestly, I feel like there's two me's, like there's the Lydia that like loves all of the fashion and beauty stuff and then there's the Lydia that loves like this stuff now, but um, I've spent, the rest of the evening in the garden and um, I've just been watering everything. I've got the first shoots of my spring onions that I sewed directly into the beds. Um, I've got six, six asparagus plants in now, I think. Yeah, six asparagus plants are in one of the beds. Um, I think I've got some normal onion sprouts as well. I've just been talking to Ali's gramps and I think I'm gonna do some potatoes as well. Apparently, Good Friday is the day to, to plant your potatoes, basically. So I thought that I would open some packages with you and show you what's been arriving, because I've got quite a few things to my PO box. Well, you're always worried about the ones that say private and confidential, aren't you? <laughs> so first up, I thought that we could get into my Farmer Gracie order, because I've just had some topsoil put on the little beds either side of the greenhouse. So really, I should be able to start getting my little cut flower garden in. Wowzers. So these are the Gypsophilia ones. So this is Bristol Fairy. Lots, of, I've, I bought a lot of the same ones. Oh my goodness, Bristol Fairy. We've got more Bristol Fairy. <laughs> oh dear. This is my Cosmos, and these are the Flamingo, Flamingo, Gypsophilia, Bristol Fairy, Flamingo. Oh my gosh, I bought so much. I'm actually worried about getting all of this out and then not being able to put it in. Flamingo, Flamingo. So these are all my Cosmos, and do you know what? I, I was worried that I hadn't ordered enough. So then we've got some Ranunculars, some anemones, anemones, anemones. It's my first time trying this, so I am, I'm wanting to, you know, to do something fun, and I've kind of gone for a little like pink and white theme, so that should be good. Now oh, you can see things like sprouting in there. How exciting is that? Yes, you can sit on mummy's lap whilst she unboxes things. That's very helpful, little piggy. Mm, your breath smells like poo because that's all you eat. Enjoying that, I'm sure the, the internet is loving the sound of you chewing on your bully stick. By the way, 
I know I spoke about the bully sticks not being um, suitable for him. He's now like six months in a couple of days. And he absolutely loves them. He is obsessed with bully sticks. Sometimes they're the only things that like calm him down. Admittedly, they are probably the worst smelling things I've ever smelled in my life. And Ali can barely, <laughs> Ali can barely handle them. But, so this is a brand called Porter. To Lydia and Porter, I hope you love your new accessories. Thank you for supporting. Good boy, my little Tinkerbell. Um, really helped me through lockdown to de-stress and take some time to breathe away from this business venture. I am loving producing designing dog products, so thank you for supporting a couple of dogs. What do we have for a little puppy dog? <gasps> it looks right up your street, Mr. Porty Poo. I know that you are particularly, particularly particular about what you will wear. So we have a little doggy treat bag, <gasps> and it's in this lovely shade of green which you like, don't you? And I think there might be some treats in here for you. <gasps> There's a treat in here for you, look at this. <sighs> you are such a good boy. And then we have a very, very lovely lead as well for you. Wowzers, lucky little boy. Being spoiled rotten. Oh, and we have a collar to match. No, not to match. It matches your treat bag. Um, did you just regurgitate that? Did you? Did you not want that one bit? bit? You want that? Okay, good. Let me finish that bit. Oh, oh no. You've done it all over my leg. Do you, do you just want to eat it? Oh, that is so gross. <laughs> you are the grossest. Um, I will link, obviously, all of these. No, 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 no. Don't leave it like that on my leg, Porter. Eat it. What's it? And now you're sitting in it. You are so disgusting. I hope you know that. I love you, but you're gross. Oh, there's another one from Couple of Dogs. Hopefully there's something else in here that you can destroy. <laughs> oh, this is my dress that didn't arrive um, in time for my haul. You taking yourself for a walk with your new lead? He just grabbed his lead from Couple of Dogs. Is it Couple of Dogs? Yeah, he's grabbed his lead and he's taking himself for a walk. I love an independent pup. It has this beautiful embroidery at the bottom and then it's just a really smart day dress, I felt, for like, just with sandals and things like that. I thought that'd be lovely. I'm not gonna try it on with you now, but you'll probably see it on my Instagram. You are unbelievable. Can you just not? You can smell treats in my pocket. Every single jumper that I wear has little treats for you. I think that that is enough unboxings for now because he is um, in one of those moods. So I am gonna leave this vlog here and I shall see you guys in my next one. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that this one provided you with some much needed lols. See you in my next video. Bye!